don't know if you've ever tried drinking nice red wine out of a, a white mug. Uh, first of all, I don't recommend it, but like it's so like jarring. You like you can't really enjoy this red wine. It's like if you take a wine camping and you've got like a little plastic cup or something. Yeah. Or imagine you drink it out of a rubber cup. Or something this is like that. right. I was going to ask if this was your own research or if it was just you know student days again. <laughs> I've, I've been testing all sorts. Like the, the senses are just amazing, aren't they? And I think we think about them as like five different senses and we're so lucky to have them in this brain that pulls it all together and we probably don't realise just how insanely incredible that is the whole time. Our eyes see, our ears hear, our noses smell, our mouths taste, our skin touches. Or is that just the tip of the iceberg? Hello and welcome to Sketchplanations, the podcast. This week, we start with a riddle. As I was going to St Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Each wife had seven sacks. Each sack had seven cats. Each cat had seven kits. Kits, cats, sacks and wives. How many were there going to St Ives? The answer, of course, is three. Because the detail I neglected to include is that I was going to St Ives to record this podcast. (laughs) And what would this podcast be without my prodigiously perceptive pals, John O'Hay and Tommy Tomster Pellero? Hello. Good evening, boys. That was very good, Robbie. Good evening. <laughs> I promised Jack, Tom, uh, your son, yes. at the weekend on his birthday that uh, I asked him, no, he asked me, what are you going to call Tom this week? I said, I don't know, which, <laughs> what do you want me to call him? He said, Tomster. Tomster. Okay. <laughs> so it's Tommy Tomster Pellero today. Yes, he he Tomster. really enjoys listening to them. Um, my daughter Poppy, not so much. She's like, no, boring, boring. But Jack really, Jack's like, no, I want to listen. I want to listen to Daddy. Oh, my dad said he got through two minutes and then got bored. <laughs> <laughs> what wow. I like about that is his honesty. Yeah, can't please everyone. Very, very honest. Very honest. <laughs> my mum was quoting something back to me about the podcast, and my dad was completely unaware. She had, he had no idea what she was talking about. It's like, mum, you've listened. <laughs> Brilliant. That must be a few episodes behind, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've both heard that riddle before, though, the old St. Ives riddle. Yes. Johnny, what is the answer traditionally? As you were going to St. Ives, um, you met all these people going the other way, I think is is the key of it. Is that right? That is what is uh, that's what's implied through the answer. Implied, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, there are many though, ways to answer it. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't hold up in court. I don't think. <laughs> mm. Do you boys know any good riddles? The, uh, the riddles that I always remember from the Hobbit. I don't know if you remember, do you read oh, that yeah. okay. a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. When um, when Bilbo meets up with Gollum in the dark and they have a, a riddle off to, oh, yeah. <laughs> to see who's going to keep keep the ring. <laughs> And he's just like making them up. It's quite impressive. Um, the one I remember is, it's good. It's a good one for kids, actually. A box without hinges, key or lid, yet golden treasure inside is hid. What am I? That's the one. An egg. Is that right? <laughs> Rapid. Yeah, very good. Is very it? Good. Yeah, that is right. Come on. That's right. You get to keep the ring of power. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> um so I, I did a little bit of research into riddles um so apparently one of the most ancient forms of entertainment and learning um so from the very and again from a very very small amount of research i did apparently the first discovered written riddles around four thousand years old uh written by the ancient sumerians one of the oldest civilizations in the world from mesopotamia which is now the kind of um it's, it's kind of Middle East, isn't it? It's Iraq kind of way. Um, so uh, an example of, of one of their riddles. A house you enter blind but come out with sight. What kind of house is it? I mean, one where an optician oh. lives, but I don't know. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> Eye hospital. A school. Oh. Uh, um, and I was going to say something like a maternity ward. Because you enter as a baby yeah that's not bad unborn. yeah mm-hmm. remember this is in um ancient mesopotamia <laughs> times <laughs> it's, a, it's a, another one from ancient greece uh so that's, that's like kind of four five hundred bc um known this one has a name known as the riddle of the sphinx what is the creature that walks on four legs in the morning two legs at noon and three legs in the evening 
Oh, Tom's got a face to say yeah, that he knows no, it. I do. Now, this is very similar to what I just said. This is a human because when you're a baby, you're on four legs. When you're in middle age and when you're a grandpa, you've got a walking stick. He's done it. Mm-hmm. He's done it. Very good. Very good. Yeah. I find them a little bit tedious, to be honest, uh, Riddle. <laughs> do you know what? We... um. Uh, when you're on walks with kids it's nice to have activities that's Um, good and one of the things that we do is like a b c so you're like um i don't know things in harry potter beginning with a and then you do that and then b and then whatever and so you do a theme another one we tried a few times was riddles and you make up your own riddles and i was really impressed with the the ones that people come up with if you're just walking casually and you think of a riddle <laughs> things like yeah i don't know candles and stuff they're good for riddles there's all sorts of meanings to them you should try it just try oh, it it's good, good. It's good. Try making up your own riddles now that sounds like more fun making it up rather than you know because there, there must be books of these that have been told for decades and decades and decades uh so in preparation for this i've just been asking chat gbt to write a riddle about tonight's uh, tonight's theme uh, and it started with quite a long one so i said could you make it a bit shorter and then it was still a bit long uh, and i was like could you make it even shorter please <laughs> and for some reason i always feel i need to be really polite to chat gbt i always like to say please That's and good. thank you so um I don't know. I don't want to take the thunder away from it, Robbie, but um, there are, I have a two line riddle about tonight's uh, sketch planation. If you uh, go on, yeah, bung it. Let's, let's, let's have a go. It. Come on. Sight may hear, taste may see. I unite senses. What could I be? Very good. It's really pretty yeah. impressive. Actually, that's good. Isn't it? S- say no more. Let's let's leave the listeners kind of oh pondering there. It really reminds me. Um, my uh, my mum grew up in Plymouth, and we go there, and there's something called the it's, it's Plymouth Sound is the yes. like the the bay, um, and I remember my <laughs> dad always used to say Plymouth is a place where you can see the sound and hear the sea. Oh, which is, that's which is, good. Which is very, very similar, reminding me of the chat GPT. That's yeah. good. Maybe yeah, I do yeah. like riddles. Yeah, yeah. 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 they are Just, good. Maybe I do. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who's listened and who's now subscribed to the podcast every week. It's brilliant to see that listenership growing. Um, obviously, we want to keep that going. So it'd be lovely if you could tell your friends and family about the podcast. Maybe even retweet, retweet, retweet. Maybe even retweet or repost some of the stuff we put out. You can email us about your experiences of the things that we cover to Tom. What's the email address? It's a very good question. <laughs> that was just everyone should know the answer to. And I think it's hello at sketchplanations.com. Oh, he's only got a nail it. Nice one, matey. Very good. Or you can leave us a comment on social media. I think perhaps the most used riddle over time, if you can call it that, is the old classic, why did the chicken cross the road? And we'll never know for sure, but it might have been to get to an internet cafe to download this episode of Sketch Nations, the podcast. So to prevent that being a wasted and undoubtedly risky journey for our quick-footed, feathery friend, let's move this along. This week, we're talking about cross-modal perception which is about how the brain integrates information from the five human senses to produce a coherent impression of reality. And this mostly happens without us being conscious of it and can have surprising outcomes. The artwork for this episode should be showing you Jono's sketch for this phenomenon. But if you can't see it on your podcast player, just pop along to sketchplanations.com and you'll have a look at it there. Cross-modal perception. It is an odd one, this, I think, Jono, because... As I just said there, it, it, it does happen around us a fair bit, but, well, I'll speak for myself, I'm not always that aware of it until something's been pointed out to me and then for a little while in the future after that, I am quite aware of it. Um, and it's, I think it's just quite interesting. And my initial question to you, as always, what was it that drew your attention to cross-modal perception to do the sketch about it? Cross-modal perception came to me when I, when I read an article, um, and I linked to it in the sketch, actually. It was a, a New Yorker article. I can't remember where I found it. It was called Accounting for Taste by Nicola Twilley. This is back in 2015. Um, and it just gave so many interesting examples of... Actually, you really, the thing, the thing that really got uh, got me interested in it was... People always complain about plain food. Mm. Yeah. And 
I, that it's tasteless. It's kind of bland. Doesn't really do much for you. Exactly. Yeah. And and to be honest, I I quite like. Mm, it's not bad. Plain, I, I I love sitting on a plane and people serving me food. I mean, it's just <laughs> brilliant. I don't have to do anything. Food comes. It's great. Bottle of wine. Yes, yeah, sure, please. But people complain all the time. And this article gives some reasons actually as to there might be some some reality behind it actually tasting worse on a plane. John, why don't you tell us some of the examples that you put into your sketch? I think then it gives us a really good idea about what we're talking about with cross-modal perception. Yeah, so well, cross-modal perception, first off, is interaction between senses. So when, let's say, your your smell affects your taste or how something, the environment, the sound affects what you're eating. So the examples I give was actually f- from the article, which a coffee tastes better when the machine is quiet and uh, amazingly it tastes less sweet if you drink it out of a white mug it tastes more intense and the other one which as get to it which was the plain food bit which is actually when you have that sort of background noise of the aircraft yeah food tastes less sweet or 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 salty well sorry less sweet or salt and salty when you're flying so hence hence when people might describe it as being bland kind of flavorless exactly and the other bit of the example was chips taste potato chips crisps taste less fresh if we can't hear the crunch which is another thing that also happens on planes so you know you're 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 eating a crisp on a plane there's a lot of background noise you can't hear the crunch quite so well and therefore your mind goes this this is a little bit stale to 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 associate your hearing with how things taste i found i found this absolutely fascinating it's massively opened my eyes to this kind of thing the coffee machine like it, it tastes better was it, it tastes better it tastes less sweet less if you sweet. drink it out of a white mug so it tastes i think it was more intense is how they describe it which i, I mean I, I can sort of imagine i mean you know this, these were the results that they found but like um I feel there, like if you drink something out of a white mug, a dark liquid out of a white mug, yeah, you see the contrast. Yes, contrast, black, white, bosh. Of it, right? Yeah. So imagine, you know, if you actually, oh, actually we have one here, which is a we have a black mug, and it's quite it's quite strange to have a black drink in a mm. black mug. You don't actually have it very often. Yeah, but I should maybe I should test the two. I should line I should line them up. But I think there is something like you see the contrast of the color of the coffee with the color of the mug and that tells your brain that this thing is stronger than maybe it is if yeah you, if you didn't have that contrast I, I i totally get that it intensifies that color with the white background whereas the the dark let's call it black coffee uh, against a black background it's all kind of blurring in i i, yeah. I, I get it but i'd i'd love the next time i have a coffee out of a dark mug I, you just want both right What's going on here? You just want to try it, don't you? And I should say um, the article references this guy called Charles Charles Spence, uh, professor in the UK, and and he he won what's called the was it the Ig Nobel Prize, which is for <laughs> for you know research, which is a little bit crazy, let's say, um, and made people laugh, but also maybe made them think. And basically, what he did was he had people eat. I think it was two hundred. Pringles, yeah, and, and the, yeah, reason, I think and the reason he picked Pringles was they're identical, and so he had people eat Pringles, and he had people with headphones on, and then he would change the noise of the crunch as they ate it, and people, if they didn't hear the crunch, people said that the chip was stale, even though they were all the same. Was mm. basically what it was. <laughs> it's just like a fascinating and a kind of crazy experiment to do. And as I understand it, Charles Spence is, has been and maybe even continues to be quite um, heavily sought after by brands uh, who are developing products and want to improve the customer experience of their products with the packaging, with, I don't know, whatever else you might be involved in. Cause I, I was also, so things about colours as well, colours of, of packaging affecting how we might experience the product. And a, and a lot of the things that, that this chap, Charles Spence, um, has spent time on is around food and food products, right? Um, consumable yeah. products. I mean, it's it's not it's not exactly the same, but I remember for cars, like um, people spending quite a lot of time on the sound that the door makes as you close a car door. Oh yeah, the sort of soft sort of. Yes, and and 
and people have a lot of associations with that sound like if it goes ting you like don't feel like this is you don't feel safe. safe yeah you don't feel safe right so you need this like <laughs> and, and so, you know yeah it's it's probably worth worth quite a lot and maybe plays quite a lot of uh, part in our experience of all these products Tommy, what's um what what are your experiences of uh, cross modal perception well, that you know of? Well, so I've brought my uh, Costa coffee cup tonight, um, which I must admit <laughs> I do really quite enjoy drinking out of it. It always makes me feel, oh, this is a really proper cup of coffee. I must admit I don't quite know how I ended up in my house with her. Yeah, I was questioning that, <laughs> um, but I really enjoy as, drinking. Out as of are it. any uh, employees <laughs> of Costa yeah. who are listening. But I do think the the redness, for some reason, for my brain certainly, uh, really makes a, a coffee sort of taste more more premium potentially. Um, but you asked me uh, about about my my work, and we certainly found with our teeth whitening range, the Style Smile, we did a lot of work on the packaging, and discovered that really kind of premium packaging and weight of the toothbrush was very important to make people feel that this was going to be more whitening. And we found that in the research groups that when the toothbrush was heavier, they felt that their teeth were actually whiter as a result. They genuinely scored higher really? on the whiteness, on the effects of the product. So we actually ended not, up not just out. on not just on their perception of kind of general quality, but on that the, how they felt that the outcome of what that was trying to do, whiten their teeth. Yeah. Because it was heavier. Because it felt more quality. It felt, therefore, more expensive. So, therefore, it felt like it must be doing more. And the mental yeah. perception was that the teeth were whiter at the end. Uh, and, and that kind of thing. So, that's, that's one example. Um, we quite often use what's called a sort of a soft touch spray. Um, and many people will, will have first experienced this on the... You remember when Apple um, iPod first came out and the headphones had that kind of softy texture about them? Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Which at the time, yeah. which now everything has, right? Yes. But at the time, yeah, and it was slightly a bit of a pain because it really caught on things, but it just met, made them feel sort of softer on you. Uh, and that's a spray that you can put on uh, certain products. So a lot of um, mice, computer mice, have it, and it just feels a little bit softer in the hand. Um, and it's actually just a spray. So so we use that on a on a few different products. It just makes them feel softer and more kind of gentle uh, so on the makeup brush cleaner we use that on the on the device and it, it when we were doing the testing people just found that in their minds that this was therefore probably more delicate on the brush which was really important mm. for us whereas if the device was just hard plastic it felt like all oh, this this feels quite hard quite heavy maybe it's going to be damaging versus the, the soft touch so it's 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 interesting you, you mentioned so a number of things you mentioned there yes. correlate to some of the things that charles spence uh discovered in some of his yeah research so um you're talking about the color red so coca-cola can red yeah and there's there's a there's a story an anecdote about um they did a, a limited edition where coca-cola were supporting polar bears um in the arctic and they changed their cans to white and customers reported that they must have changed the formula here because this this doesn't taste as sweet you've you've, you've done something different here um so Amazing. red supposedly um can make us perceive things as being sweeter um you mentioned Is that about why jono has red glasses because yeah, he's a sweetheart yeah look at that <laughs> <laughs> does it work on people I'm not sure. uh, i'll try um tommy you you mentioned weight um so again charles spencer's research showed that um that yogurt was perceived to be more filling when eaten from a slightly heavier container really slightly heavier plastic container they felt like oh, oh i really yeah. like that i've had a bit more of that it reminds um, me of there's um you know the Le Creuset yeah. pans, cooking uh, pans, so heavy, just like su surprisingly heavy. But maybe you know you serve a soup out of a Le Creuset pan. You know, carry this to the table with you, and everybody's like full up after a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Genius. Do that in a restaurant when you just serve heavy bowls and people eat that. So you know the sort of protein shake containers. Should they make those like really heavy? Because then you even you know like if you probably should. I mean, I th do you know, I'm 
actually thinking about this. I'm hungry all the time. <laughs> getting hungry now. Getting I'm going to start heavy bowl. using heavier containers. Yeah, yeah heavy bowls. <laughs> heavy containers. I'm going to eat out of a cement mixer. <laughs> um, no, the third and the third one that's uh, again from Charles Spencer's research. Um, that cookies seemed harder and crunchier when served from a rougher surface rather than a smooth surface. And you were talking about um, that kind of um, mm. perception of quality. Yeah. But he, he, Spencer's research showed that, that, that the cookies seemed harder and crunchier. It's crazy or stuff. And the, the thing that, that gets me is that I, I don't think it is just trickery. Because it is actually what we're experiencing. It is what consumers are experiencing. So... It, it's it's not trickery. It's more enhancery. Yeah, I was thinking there's um uh, those wine glasses. I think make a huge difference mm. to the to the experience, but I believe also to the taste. And some of them, the, the glasses sort of say that because you've got like a you know a, a big basket essentially for the yep. fl- the smell to oscillate in that's you're you're getting more out of the wine yeah but also like the thinness of the glass there's something about you know if you go to a fancy restaurant they will have super thin glasses and it's just so di- i don't know if you ever tried drinking white red wine a nice red wine out of a, yeah. a white mug uh I, I, first of all i don't recommend it but like it's so it's so like jarring you like you can't really enjoy this red wine it's like if you take a wine camping and you've got like a little plastic cup or something yeah you're like mm, this, this isn't the right mm, yeah and it doesn't matter how good how good the wine is when you drink it or imagine you drink it out of a rubber cup or something like that yeah i was going to ask if this was um your own research or if it was just you know <laughs> student days again I've, I've been testing all sorts there's red solo cups you know one sort of ones you play beer pong with you know those are great for yeah sa- sangria <laughs> <laughs> you've you, basically you've drunk red wine out of every possible type of vessel, John. I think is what we're discovering. Yeah, yeah. if you give me a bottle of red wine, I'll try it. Out. <laughs> I do remember somebody drinking it out of a shoe once. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't somebody we knew, but maybe. but also um, people always say that tea tastes better out of uh, out of a teapot or out of a china mug or out of a china cup. Yeah, I, and I, 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 yeah, maybe because I've been told that. That is, whenever it is served to me in a china cup, I do always enjoy it more. But is that the flavour? Is that just the, the overall enjoyment of it? Uh, there's something. Are you enhancing that... the experience of drinking tea, not necessarily the flavour? When um, at the coronation recently, we got out the tea set. Ooh, <laughs> we, lovely. We don't use it very often, but oh. it's sort of up in the cupboard. We're given a you know a historic tea set from the from the family. So we're like, right. If you're going to drink tea, Now's the coronation's time. good time to do it. You know, you have have a little saucer and a and a little a little a teeny little handle, and you put your little finger out. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Get the full experience. I mean, I do think the thing with mm. it, honestly, like the best innovation a coffee shop could do would be to make it quiet. Like yeah. coffee machines just so oh and that noisy, like. bang 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 to empty the thing out you kind of like <laughs> yeah. it's like someone's having a fight in the corner isn't it when they're smacking yeah. it it is intrusive if you go in to have a chat with somebody in a coffee in a coffee shop yeah nah you're right yeah so so like maybe the best thing you could do to to improve the taste of the coffee would be to insulate your coffee machines mm. and do yeah. your grinding in the cupboard or something yeah. like that yeah. It's so different from I, I, I probably one of, one of the nicest sort of coffee experiences I remember having was in it in Italy, but just a homemade espresso sitting on like a a little deck looking out over the hills. And it was super quiet and lovely. Obviously, it's a mm. nice day, and and I feel like it tasted. I feel like it tasted better there as well. There you, you know, go in that, in that peace and quiet. There's a lot of examples well beyond food as well. And, and I think TV and films are brilliant at creating this kind of perception and this feeling. And have you ever watched um, Master and Commander, the Russell Crowe film, where he's on, oh, the, no. he's on the boat? It's just this amazing film where he's, a, he's the captain. And apparently on the first day, he was like, right, OK, to get all the actors to make us all feel like this crew, we're all going to wear different outfits. So the, the the captain had it and the, his kind of commanders, as it were, they were all given a certain uniform and then everyone was given a different uniform, like just a, it was just a T-shirt, right? To make them suddenly, because although they were all like 
actors and they all kind of sort of knew each other it then gave a, an instant hierarchy to the yeah. to the people to everyone while they were kind of practicing and it sort of apparently it sort of created this thing of you know them and us and you know and it gave that kind of perception which then fed across really nicely I- I- into the film um God, it's really powerful, isn't it? Yeah, how how our environment, how our dress, how what we wear, how you know prefix badges and the and the kind of tie when you're in sick form that you get to wear, or that sort of stuff. How that creates that that perception as well. And Robbie, I'm sure you you have that in 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 your filming where you're kind of trying to get people to to feel in a certain way. And when the music starts coming into the uh, the episodes before they air, um, how that suddenly makes it feel like it's underground or at the sea or yeah you do yes yes so you use of music with um what kind of work i do um factual documentaries yeah you do but but this is the same across um all types of um film and telly i think where you use music to build uh build an emotion yeah whether that's um tension or whether that's joy or whether it's I don't know, whatever it might be yeah that's a good point yeah which which again is is it's the way we are perceiving what is coming at yes. us and, and using as many senses as we can. I thought you were going to say, when you said TV, I thought you were going to say smell a vision. Do you remember, oh, do you remember yeah. that? Because that, yeah. that, that doesn't really come up, even in those 4D things, do they? I remember, yeah, like they'll blow wind at you or bubbles yeah. or something. <laughs> we're, not, we're not very good at like controlling smell and getting rid of it and changing it to the next one you know like you can ch- well you can change a picture right just like that yes and you can change you can swap something out but it's actually quite hard to like sweep a room of one smell and change it to another smell don't, don't we know it <laughs> Cur- yeah. no you're, you're you're right though and go on, go on you, you feel like currently it's the sort of next frontier isn't it we just like digitalize we just haven't managed to really digitalize smell in a way that we can sound and the other senses yeah one day you have a chat GPT for smell. Huh? Can you give us a smell for a family reunion, please? <laughs> what? <laughs> Could be the future. You know, I did. I did. Um, uh, went went round a friend of mine's house and we did like a pub quiz and everyone bring their own round and you do it around the table and um, one of them did a round of smells. So little jars, little ramekins with tin foil over the top and a few holes pierced in the top, so you couldn't see what was in there you just yeah. had to smell mm. it and say what it was and these were very common these were very common items that we should all know that we all smell and and eat it's so tough though when you can't see it and the and then another round they did the second round they did shots of different types of booze like rum whiskey tequila gin vodka but put Punch food coloring in them okay and so that's taken away from you. That sight was taken away from you. Now you've got the flavour. Like, oh, I don't. Is that whiskey or is it vodka? I mean, you should know it's the difference just between horrible. whiskey and vodka. They're such yeah. different flavors. <laughs> oh, yeah. Neither of them are that nice to take a shot of. But, yeah, we're so, so, we're so dependent, I think. Probably most people, most of the time, are really dependent on cross-modal perception. Yeah, yeah I'm, I mean, even if you just did... a bunch of fruit and you, or even a yogurt you said like what flavor yogurt is this but they didn't tell people what yogurt yeah. it was I, yeah i would easily get it wrong it's yeah. <laughs> when, when i don't know it's funny. i was thinking there is some i've never been there i don't know if you guys have been there. there's like a, a one of those restaurants where you go in and you're completely in the dark and they take away all, all the other senses i've not you been done that i've mm-hmm. not been no i just think it would be a, a, a fascinating experience but I, i've never i have done a was it a float tanks so those are getting rid of all your senses there you just lie and you're in super salty water in a little pod and so you basically float and it's perfectly at room temperature so you don't have any sense of weight and you can't feel any temperature and it's completely dark after some time basically pitch black Mm. and you can't hear anything because it's all insulated as well so basically all of your senses have gone it's it's a weird experience just, All you can do just, is is lick yourself to taste something. I guess you could, you know, maybe. <laughs> you take it again a little bit. Like, oh, that's salty. Weird. So, how how long do yeah. you stay in there? As, no as idea. No. <laughs> exactly. yeah, it could have been yeah, three weeks. All of weeks. a sudden, the lights come on and you're like, a, <laughs> yeah, feel a little bit hungry, lost some weight. Oh. Um, 
D- doing a bit more reading around cross-modal perception. I, I don't, and John and Tommy, I don't know if you know any more than this, but why it physiologically or psychologically happens, I, I don't think there's a, a widely accepted scientific answer for a lot of them. Is that is that right from what you know? I'm afraid I've I've not gone into the science of it. I just found the experiment so so fascinating. But no, I mean, there's mm. a lot of, I don't know, yeah, our brains and our senses are just amazingly complicated and there's probably so much we still still need to find out. Maybe somebody has found out, but I, I haven't, unfortunately, in this one. Mm. I mean, I did, I did read, we read somewhere that something like um, the colour red having an association with sweetness could be um, j- just from... Uh, regular associations or many associations in nature so things like strawberries and apples or whatever else yeah. like red and you know taste sweet I d- but i don't i don't know and and that's the whole thing about this field like some of it is to do with the mechanics of our of, of our senses and some of it is to do with just how we've been brought up how we associate things yeah conditioning yeah my my kids jack is currently obsessed with prime because of the influences, because of YouTube. Um, and I've tasted it, it's disgusting. But he just thinks it's <laughs> utterly amazing. We had to drive to miles away, Asda, recently to go and get a can for him. You know, and that's just, that's a perception that's just been built up for him. And they're very plain looking cans. Well, the, the, the thing going around the, the school here at the moment is something called Air Up, where you basically drink water. But yes. There's a little sachet of smell. So you just basically have a different smell as you're drinking the water. And it, Gives you the flavour of the water. What essentially? Well done, yeah. John. I've got it downstairs. He loves that as well. <laughs> have you really? Yeah, and yeah. like everyone in his class seems I've to not have tried it. it. And it's so, it's exactly this. It's a a bottle of water with a smelly pod that goes at the top of the straw. So when you suck up through the straw, you get the smell of orange or black. And black can you change or, what you put in that yeah. little pod on the straw? You can check, and you can sh- you can pull it out a little bit more to get more smell or less smell. <sighs> I had a, a, a boss who said that he, he felt we had probably like an evolutionary evolutionary preference for cold water, and and the thing because I think that's true. Like if you if you drink lukewarm water, it's just not nearly as satisfying mm-hmm. as yeah. cold water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he said, well, you know, what is what is cold water normally? Cold water is running water fresh and it's uh. fresh water and even if it's just as clean and just as fresh if it's not cold it doesn't seem that way and so mm. it doesn't have the same effect and this this wasn't science it was just an opinion but it's, it's quite a good one i think it's, there's probably something in it i think most if not all people at least most people will experience cross-modal perception in some way or another whether they know it or not but what not everybody um experiences is something called synesthesia yeah which is where people see colors and and or shapes with certain letters or words or numbers that kind of thing does that make sense to you like when i first heard about this it didn't make sense to me at all yeah I mean, I, d- I don't know the details but i think yeah i think it's where you sort of naturally associate one sense with another um i remember i yeah i always remember this the beginning of fantasia the first one the disney one where they put put in classical music but uh, to an animation and it's such an interesting exercise to just like go well what we've just had this blare of trumpets what does that look like yes now we've got some violins and they're sort of going up, up. And, I say it like they're going up and down. It's like a wave or something. So we're going to draw a wave. And I think it's so interesting when you go, okay, that that music like feels spiky to me. Let's say, yeah. Versus that mu- music feels soft. Like, yeah. And I bet, but some people generally experience. I think they experience colours or shapes when hearing music or seeing a letter or mm-hmm. writing a number that they have those kind of associations that is very real for them. I, I don't have it. And it's very difficult, I think, for somebody who doesn't have it or ever experienced it to, to try and explain it. And if none of us do experience synesthesia, then we'll probably not do a great job of it. <laughs> if, if there are any synesthetes, synesthesia-experiencing listeners, do let us know what it's like listening to this podcast. That would be really interesting to know. 
um yeah hello at sketchplanations.com uh send us an email i'd, I'd love to know I'd, I'd be fascinated i, I don't think i've ever yeah, met yeah. anybody or at least i might have met them but i haven't ever spoken to them about it who has the yeah. um, synesthesia yes yeah, fasc- fascinating it is it's amazing um another one i came across was uh the mcgurk effect cool. which yeah is <laughs> Um, I love it. You know so exactly what, you, what it is, Johnny. Johnny, you're just going to see if Robbie can do it. <laughs> so it's what, I don't it's, know very well. It's 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 when what you hear is influenced by what you see. So we've talked a lot about tastes yeah. in the first part of the podcast here. Um, so this is this is very much the McGurk effect. Is very much about what you hear being influenced by what you see. And and the great example that I've seen, you can look it up on YouTube, listeners, it's, it's brilliant. Um, there's a guy going, basically going, bar, bar, bar at the camera. So you hear bar as in B double A, let's say. Then they dub that bar, 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 the sound over him going far, far, which is the very different uh, shape that you make with your mouth to produce the F, far far but what you what you hear and and it's very difficult to you you have to look away if you want to try and hear bar when he's making the mouth shape of far that's amazing it, it's it's almost <laughs> impossible it's almost i i, I yeah I, I can't do it it doesn't matter how much you concentrate on trying to hear the other thing because he's making a different shape with his mouth you hear what his mouth is doing it's like the power of like lip reading generally, isn't it? <clears throat> Makes such a difference into your your interpretation of what somebody's saying. Like, yeah, you can sort oh, of yeah. miss stuff, and you just you you figure it out by what you see. But I guess you can play with it as well, and which helps in noisy um, coffee shops. <laughs> yeah, Gen- genuinely, it really does. <laughs> yeah, it would. It really like does. It. And I think, and I think maybe a third. Um, a, a third phenomenon within this realm is ASMR, uh, mm. which I've written down: autonomous sensory meridian response. Which again, yeah. I don't experience. Um, but what I understand it's certain sounds, or maybe even um, feel that gives you a kind of tingly sensation through your head and spine. I, I, I mean, I don't know a lot about. I remember reading an article in wired magazine about various like youtube channels which would suddenly massive because it just had videos of people just doing interesting things like um I remember one of them was like running their hand through a bowl of m&ms you know, it's like <laughs> going, you know, just like that and you've got the colors and the shapes and then but you've got that sort of sound of them all moving about and uh yeah curious things like that which evidently make you know really affect people in certain ways because it seems to be really popular at the moment and some of it sometimes it's it was whispering so there were um, like there would be people being really close to the mic and just whispering it like whispering words like this amazing nice that's really cool <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, well that, I mean that's a thing like, as you said there's like, loads of videos of this kind of stuff does that make everyone want oh, yeah. to see or a coffee oh wow it's like we're in a coffee shop oh. <laughs> now, now oh. we're just doing sound effects yeah. amazing <laughs> if you want to download any sound effects used to this podcast please feel free <laughs> and god help you any conclusions or um, anything else you want to talk about on cross modal perception around McGurk or synesthesia I had, I had one one more related sketch explanation I have around sensors oh yeah um, it took me a long time to find it because it was just one word and um, but the the word is proprioception um, which no doubt won't mean anything to anybody but it's basically it's our ability to to know the position and movement of the joint our joints and limbs Without oh, I remember seeing this. Yes. Yeah. What's it called again? Proprioception. Pro- proprioception. So the yeah. fact right now you can tell that you're sat on a chair and maybe that your legs are crossed or your yeah. legs are down or your arm is up in the air. And actually it's quite disorienting. Like imagine if you wake up and your arm is like above your head or something. Maybe it's a bit disorienting for a moment where your your brain figures out where, where you your are. limbs are. Yeah. Yeah. Um <clears throat> 
but apparently apparently i quite like it because i think this is why i heard about it it's apparently it's easily impaired by alcohol it messes <laughs> with our ability to sense our position of our joints and limbs which is of course exactly what happens people get clumsy right you start people knock stuff over and so uh, at one point it, it was used as a sobriety test by police so if you <laughs> I mean, I won't try it right now, but if you if you stand on one leg and you put one arm out to the left and then you shut your eyes and then you try with your other hand to touch your nose with your eyes shut, you can do it just about if you're if you're if you're sober. But apparently if you've had a few drinks, it's actually really hard to do. So next time you have a few drinks, it might be a fun thing to try. (laughs) What you say it used to be tried but not long ago because that's that's like the classic bit in American cinema, right? The guy gets pulled over by the cops and he's made to do the the drunk test where you walk down the dotted line and then you do the stand on the leg, arm out, touch your nose thing. Do they? Yeah, I've seen it loads of times in American films and stuff. Oh, have you? Oh, I don't know about walking down a line, but I've, I've never seen the, the stand on one leg, touch your nose. I've, I've definitely seen that in uh, Americana culture in in films as I've also seen it in a brilliant YouTube video, which is on a um, police dash cam, and it's late at night, and this um, uh, police officer's pulled over a driver who she suspects to be drunk. They're chatting out the back of the car, and you can hear it all. And the chat, and he's doing it all. He's walking down the straight line. He's walking down the line. He's doing the finger on the nose thing, standing on one leg. It's absolutely fine. And then he catches her out because they're just chatting, and she knows what she's doing. And she catches him out um, to the point where he's so relaxed, just talking to her. And he goes, yeah, down at the bar just now, me and my buddies, we were having about four or five pints. And then he's like, oh, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> I'll take you around. Right <laughs> That's good. Like the, the senses are just amazing, aren't they? And I think we think about them as like five different senses. And we're so lucky to have them in this brain that pulls it all together. And we probably don't realize just how insanely incredible that is the whole time i totally agree and and for me at least for the next week or so having done this podcast i think i will be more conscious of cross-modal perception the ones that just happen automatically um around us all the time yeah. I, I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna, at least i'm gonna try and be more conscious of them and maybe do a few little tests on you, on myself we should try eating a packet of crisps with with headphones on yeah. So you can't hear the crunch and see if it's see if it tastes stale. I think that would yeah. be a fun one to do. Whilst listening to sounds of a coffee, uh, a barista coffee maker. <laughs> Out of a red bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes like banana. <laughs> it's, that, it's, that, it's that magic combo. When you get it right, you can make anything taste like anything. <laughs> Another area, so we talk so much about, about food. Another area where that's very multi-sensory is, of course, sex. But uh, I'm not prepared to go into that <laughs> um, in this podcast, and I'm pretty sure none of our listeners want to hear us talking about it either. I think you're probably right there, Rob. <laughs> but uh, one, one to think about. Um, g- genuinely, though, we, we'd love to get uh, more examples from you. Our listeners of cross modal perception, that any others that you're aware of uh, that, that we haven't talked about, you can send your emails to hello at sketchplanations.com or you can leave us a comment on any of our social media channels. We're taking a week off from going through your correspondence this week because, well, quite simply, um, I'm not around to record it. But we'll be back with a vengeance next week and we do read everything you send in. So thank you. And then we'll have a good old read along at the end of the episode next time. And next week, we'll be talking about the cost of being late, which may very well end up being a bit more of a finger-pointing exercise, just like the episode on fubbing was. <laughs> um, Certainly not. Controversy, left, right and centre. Um, Jono's sketch on the cost of being late is up on sketchplanations.com, of course, uh, if you want to start working on your excuses now. <laughs> or you can tune in next week to find out who amongst us is the biggest culprit. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you all very much for listening. And finally, before we leave you, I've just had news in that the chicken made it safe and sound. They downloaded the episode and they left us a five-star rating. Nice one, chickaroo. Stay well, guys. Go well. Cheers. Goodbye. See you next week. And don't be late.
All music on this podcast series is sourced from the very talented Frank Cinelli. And you can find loads more tracks at frankcinelli.com.